Oh, well, I've got a fact about Elvis. Ooh. Well, can I just tell you my thing about Elvis? Go on, then. Because it struck me the other day, I saw a clip on TV, and I thought, I was very confused. I know why I was confused about Elvis when I was young. Right. Sexy because, man. <laughs> no, because the man had jet black hair. An <laughs> eyeliner. Well, it might have been. He had jet black hair, and he had a, the best tannic world. And a white, and and a white like tash. He from Mumbai. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't look like something from yeah, yeah. I thought, how am I supposed to take him serious? And then I find out he's blonde. Ring that uh, bell. Welcome back to another episode of Listenerland. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, you can join us anytime you want, hopefully every week. Uh, like and subscribe. Ring that bell. And it should be appearing just here. So give it a click. And uh, you will never, so wrong. you'll never miss out on all all of this wonderful content that we're supplying just for you, just yeah. for just you to all. anger you people at home who like to complain online. You're welcome. <laughs> Have we had many complaints? Oh, uh, legal complaints. Yeah. Uh, apparently, you should be sectioned. Yeah. Uh, well, I've state. just got back from one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us. <coughs> so, Steve Vai. The guitarist, the man that makes guitars, makes strange noises, and um, yeah, yeah, yeah. A couple goes on for three hours. He goes on for three hours. Couple in the same breath as Joe Satriani. Yep. But Steve Vai has always been a bit experimental. He's always been on the cusp of technology. He always been like you know what's over that horizon. He is. He's now got a an AI app. Really? Right. Yeah. He's got this AI app, and it's a Steve Vai app which it's an AI guitar tone app. So you can type in or speak in saying, I want a, a big filthy sound. And it, it, it'll come up with like an AI, it'll give you those different types of pedal combinations and settings, and it'll give you the sound. Or you can say, I want a dreamy pop sound, or I want a, a British crunch, and it will it will produce this sound for you. You've That's it. quite good, though. Yeah. Is it? No. Now then. No. no, no. Ah. Is, is it? <laughs> No, when you said that, my first thought was, is it, it has a lot of different tones to a lot of different songs. So he has a track called Bad Horsey, where he has a specific tone on it. Can you dial up that tone? Can you ask for that tone? I'm not sure or how... Is it, or is it like, can you make a tone up and say, I can think you, you give me that? I'm not sure how specific it is. Um... But for the video example that he played, it was like, give me a Steve Vai dreamy tone. Okay. And he created one and he went, this is great. Yeah. So I assume that he must have an amp sponsor that he works with. So we've uh, we've got a Fender Mustang. Mm. And what you get with that is a load of pedals, mm. uh, pre-sampled and stuff. And it gives you loads of previous Fender amps. Mm -hmm. So I assume there's a... a a partnership with the amper users and the pedals users and they've combined to create all these different sounds what you can make with it given the parameters of what you put in i quite like that idea it's, it's novel yeah. isn't it yeah. yeah and i think that'll catch on i think it's the way forward i don't think you'll be the last person to do that no no but it is the and first he's quite so fastidious about tone so if this is producing a specific tone he wouldn't endorse it if he wasn't happy with yeah. it. So it must be good. But it's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it is. Very good, and I yeah. like that his experiment is so early on in, in AI. And it's AI that's replicating it, not a little box. I mean, it's a little box, but it's called AI, right? Oh, you mean, right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you know, like... It's a smart... I imagine it pairs up with a smart speaker. I imagine. Or maybe it doesn't, but... It's AI that's driving this tone and making yeah. all this stuff, and I think that 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 is going to like that's going to open all new waves of what you can yeah. create with the guitar. Yeah. Uh, well, not just guitar. Not just guitar. All instruments. So, production itself. Yeah. Were you being a, an AI person? It's could, not. It's real. Couldn't you do that to AI anyway? Could you say to AI, "Can you give me a blues crunch tone?" Well, you could. And, and would it do it but how authentic without it no, without having the app? So I have watched a, a, a video of a guy creating a, a, a distorted tone, and there's some basic programming that goes in, involved with it, where how computer 
simulates it. When do you like when you, you plug into Logic Pro and you can plug your guitar mm. in and you can create a crunch sound? There's coding what's involved in that, and there's lots of open source software that you can get that from. So this guy used AI to create a a fuzz pedal. I think it was a fuzz pedal or a distortion pedal. And it, it did it, but there was lots of back and forth and there was lots of like manipulation. And this was like maybe two years ago. Uh, so there was lots of like corrections that needed making and, oh, I need you to do it like this, blah, blah, blah. And it do it. And he said, no, that's not quite right. It needs to be more like this. And then there'd be a bit of working it himself in it. But things have progressed so far in two years. In another two years, you could probably say to your own AI agent on your phone, I need you. I want you to create me this sound, um, and I want like, to give oh, give I, me settings for yeah. a blue crunch well, could, on a Mustang could, Fender. You could ask it now for the settings, but it's f to create your own custom tone, you, you'll be able to do that. I don't think it's beyond even now because it's moving that fast. Yeah, I don't but think. I don't think this time next year's. It's, is it growing every day? Oh, it's 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 growing at an incredible speed. Yeah, yeah. To the point that. Um, so you see these little things happen within AI and it's these little things what sneak up on you and then down make the line it, you're like, oh God, jump. yeah, this is where it all started. So Logic Pro, which I just mentioned earlier, Logic Pro used to have this thing which was a smart drummer and you could play a few chords to a certain rhythm and this smart drummer would sort of match the rhythm you're doing, right? And that was quite smart in right, itself. Yeah. And it'd be, you could like, you could mix up the drummer to make it more complex or you could simplify it or you could make it more aggressive, but it would respond appropriately to your song. You could add bridges in and choruses. Now it's more advanced because of AI. You can look at the song and it can, it can really adjust, but you can also get uh, AI bass guys, uh, keyboards, you know, synths, what can, add to your song just by you playing down some chords. So you could have like an AI band, Yeah, basically. pretty much, yeah. yeah. Or, or basically AI is helping you produce now. You get AI to write the song for you. Production. Well. Yeah. AI? Not necessarily. AI. Is that bird's eye? AI. I think AI is going to have a huge involvement in production because production is a bit of a dark art and there's no real answer to it. So the vagueness of it would allow itself to the user customizing what the AI is going to produce. So that you could say to Logic Pro, okay, I want you to mix this in a, an, an Exile and Main Street type. I want that, that Musal Shoal song sound. Um, but oh, it needs a bit more bass. Oh, that, that's a bit too high. And you'll treat it like an engineer. Yeah. And it'll, it'll mix things appropriately. Yeah. Because... And does it record as well? Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, it, it would work within a recording software. It right. would be a, a plugin, but it's a very interesting time. Some would say uh, not, we, yeah, interesting, but some would say it's the death of music. People said that about synthesizers. They People did. said that about the electric guitar. They did. It's just another involvement of music, and it's just the only thing is this is. Um, this has the threat of losing people's jobs or cutting people's jobs because of like sound engineers and produ producers, and to that to some degree it will. But in others, it will heighten the value of human resource, like especially within the creative realms. There'll be a certain price tag on somebody human that can produce something a bit more. It feels a bit more authentic, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, but for people who don't have that luxury of money, you can create songs by using artificial intelligence. Right, yeah. It becomes everybody's tool, do not it? It's like an automatic car. No, it's not. Well, it's not, but <laughs> it, like you don't have to do gears. It's going to do it for you. Yeah. But it's going to respond to how hard you're pressing that pedal. Yeah, yeah. I don't think people will ever lose that love of a man sat in a corner or a woman sat in a corner with an acoustic guitar and playing a song. No. No. That's going to be around for a long, long, There's long time. There's something special about a chemistry. It'd be, it'd be, it'd be really bad if yeah. that became the case. Yeah. I can't see it happening. No, I, I can't see it happening. But that's not what I'm saying, though. I know it's not what you're saying. No, yeah. I'm not I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm agreeing completely <laughs> with you. Uh, and I think, to a certain extent, it's got to go in that direction. But... 
we have to be creative and people ex in, a, in a physical way. Human nature is like that and we respond to that. And there's something quite special about four people in a room creating music and, and reflecting yeah. off each other's ideas. Yeah. And it's those those uh, instant decisions that don't necessarily come out of any planning which create a spark and it's like, oh, this is an idea. Um, the... It's it's going to be very interesting what comes out of this. There'll be a lot of good things and there'll be a lot of bad things, as in like music that's produced. Well, it gives us a lot of things to talk about. It will, um, and it's just another evol evolution of music. Yeah. Oh, bring back the wax disc, I say. Wax and lyrical. Yeah. No. Things have to move forward, and it, you you can't stop. Some might not call it progress, but you know if. You will see. We'll see what it takes us. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Imagine like an AI music teacher. It's not beyond the realms, is it? It's quite no, possible. No, why? It, why should you it have be? A, a webcam watching you, and it'd be like, no, you need to just do this or that, or you know, because music, in its fundamentals, in its theory, is just coding, really, isn't it? This is your these are your numbers that you can play. Yeah. This is what relates to that. This is what relates to that. If you can shift these numbers across here, that means this. It's all it's all a language. Yeah. It's just how you use that language. It's like, you know, you could be Shakespeare or you could be um, Bill Bryson. Bill Bryson. I'm trying to think of that guy who wrote The Shining. What do you call him? King. Stephen King. Yeah. They're using the same language. It's just Jason King, Stephen, Ste <laughs> yes, um, King King. <laughs> it, it's it's how you use it. Yeah, yeah. It, so yeah, Steve I's got an app. I, no, yeah, we went yeah. back to Steve Steve I. Yeah, well, it'd be interesting to see how that works. Actually, yeah, I think will. they'll all jump on that bandwagon if he's bringing one. Out. I think it's a good idea. I, I don't. Know. I don't think he'll be the last one no. to do it. Makes you think, like. I wonder what more there is to do with the guitar. Like, will they be able to embed AI into a guitar? Because all you need is a circuit board, so it could be something that translates to a what it plays itself. Amp. No, it just you don't need all the pedals in the amp. Maybe you just need it in the guitar. They tried that in certain guitars in the past, and uh, it's where you can like Synth switch. Pads. A, yeah, you can flitch a switch and it turns into a sitar, mm. or you can fl flitch another switch and it turns mm. into a mandolin. Or you can get to this, then you get to that. There was close, but there were no cigar. It's gimmicky, though, isn't it? Gimmicky. Yeah. Yeah, gimmicky. But you can only ever play that mandolin, and then you're playing a sitar, and then you're playing a guitar. You can't play them all together. No. You know, so you want, you, it's, it's whatever it is you're playing at that time. It's, it's yeah. gimmicky. Yeah. But I think, um, what are they called? I forget what they called them now. A friend of ours had one. It didn't last long. I think he got fed up with it very quickly. Yeah? Yeah. But, so, what would you do with guitar? It's, it's, it's only the sound that comes from it. I mean, people, I suppose, will cheat and, and they'll, they'll make songs on a guitar without actually physically playing it. Yeah. I don't know how they do it, but that's what they will do that. And yeah. it's a different tone, it's weird and wonderful. And how would you recognise that, oh, that's not real? They're not actually playing. Then it becomes, then that's the bad side of it, isn't it? I mean, I don't do the fake side of it, the cheating side of it. No, I don't think that would work for me. But it will happen. It will happen. It's probably happening now. Yeah, the cheat side and the, the fake side. Yeah. Will it's happen. happening now. Nailed on. Yeah. Uh, in other news, Brian May suffered a minor stroke. Has he really? Yeah, mm. minor stroke. I mean, uh, what's a, I minor know a minor stroke? Minor stroke, but it's a stroke, isn't it? Well, stroke yeah. minor. <laughs> <laughs> we hope not. Right on that note. <laughs> no, well, that's a gentleman that works in the coal industry. Ah, uh, yes. There we go. Yes, recovered. <laughs> Thank you. He had a minor stroke, but apparently he's all right. Really? Which just makes you think. Oh. Well, I mean, again, the what's... horizon's coming. Yeah, again he's he's knocking on a he bit, is. isn't he? Yeah, all our hero 
rules are. It's like we always say, isn't it? You get older, but you forget that all the people that you grew up with, that's 10 and 20 years older than you, they're also getting yeah, older. Yeah. <laughs> no, they're just waiting in that corner, waiting for you to just catch them up. Look, have a look at them. <laughs> yeah. and you've got to visualise them as they were yeah. 20, 30 Le years ago. Legends die too. Speaking of legends and Brian May, so uh, when... Do you know the, the Freddie Mercury statue that was above the We Will Rock You theatre? Mm. So when that was at, when at its run, uh, they took the statue down and they were going to put it in a warehouse. It's a big, uh, a big thing. It's like 20 foot, 25 foot tall. All right, yeah, that's a big one. And Roger was like, oh, I'll have, it, somewhere. I'll have it in my garden. Really? <laughs> so he's had it in his garden. <laughs> and it's like, it, it, I've seen pictures of it, it looks really impressive. Because it's a sturdy yeah. thing, it's not like polystyrene. No, no. Brian was very jealous. <laughs> really? Yeah. Apparently he was, he was very jealous of it because it looked great. So then when they uh, got the, the show back together, for they did a, a, like a spree of gigs at the Coliseum. We're going to need the statue. No, they made another one. Uh -huh. And now Brian's got that in his garden. <laughs> so there's two of these great big statues of Freddie doing the big punch in their gardens. <laughs> well, they love him though, don't they? Yeah, that's nice though, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah. I mean, you'll be saying that was about me one day. What, having your statue of your ink garden? What, 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 what do you mean, our garden? What would your paws be? It'd be like, like a plate there. A plate and a pint. <laughs> plate and a pint. With, with pork pie on. Yeah. Just Try. staring at pork pie. No. Oh, lovingly. <laughs> oh, it's great, but I can't eat it. Bless you, bless you. <laughs> the doctor's going to hate me. But yeah, that's, that's a nice... It's good, though. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to see that in their garden. I'd like to... I won't like to see it in mine. Oh, no. What, no. you'd like to see Freddie's statue in your garden? If I had a big enough garden, if I, if I had the stately house that they had, then sure. Yeah. What, you'd have Freddie in your garden, would you? No, I'd, I'd probably have a Freddo. <laughs> <laughs> in pond. In pond. <laughs> if you've got a, as much land to your house as they've got, you can have what you want in your garden. Well, you could do, yeah. Yeah. I mean, what would you have in your garden? <laughs> a good dump. <laughs> Joe Bonamassa. I'd probably have Bonamassa. Oh, really? There he is. <laughs> Tied down. Tied down on one of those like tiny like children's railway tracks. Yeah, the real little, Bonamassa. A little like tiny train going towards a six foot six trench. No, I'd have Bonamassa. With, with fresh returned earth on it. No? <laughs> no, he's a good lad. He's all right. He's a good lad. But you, you're just obsessed with it. <laughs> so I've got a, an interesting, well, let's call it... A fact that turns into... Fiction. Another fact. Ooh, double fact. But not fact. Fact, 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 fact. So, are we all familiar with... I'm going to have to read from notes because there's a lot, a lot of dates going off and I, I won't remember them all. Well, there's two dates, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so, are we all familiar with the uh, legendary old blues singer, Bessie Smith? Yeah. You will be... Yeah. Uh, 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 Bessie if, Smith? If you should be Bessie. a picture... Of Oh, so, it, uh, so it's, is it Aunt Bessie? <laughs> if you should repeat, just say, yeah. Right, I don't so know. it's coming up to the anniversary of her death. All right. So she was known as the Empress of the Blues. Mm. They all had the title, didn't they? I know yeah. what I mean now. Yeah. Didn't she play an SG? She did. Yeah. A white one. An SG. Uh, yeah, she uh, did. Yeah. Triple gunbuckers. Yeah. Mm. And she played was in England a lot. Sorry to interrupt you, but she played in England. She was played on a railway station. She's on one platform, and Ooh. the audience and the camera crew. Are on the oh, other yeah, one. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's raining. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's her. It's That's coming up to her anniversary, and what got me interested in this story is the ending, because I didn't know it, and I thought, wow, that's brilliant. That not brilliant that she died. Oh, but. Brilliant! What happens? I won't tell you ending. It's pointless me going all the way through the rest of the story. But do you know Mama Rainey? No. Well, Mama Rainey was a, a an old black blues singer when uh, Bessie Smith was coming up, uh, up and coming young lady, and she sang for a, a concert and she took under under a wing and she gave her singing lessons and coached her and got her into music and all this sort of it. and she went throughout, throughout, and fetched her up to where uh, Bessie Smith was in them days. Very highly rated uh, blues player Sorry and singer. Sorry to interrupt. Was she the woman that did Ain't Nothing But A Hound Dog? Ooh, don't know. Um, because it was a female blues singer that Elvis copied that from. Not sure. 
So I'm not sure about that. Big Mama Thornton. Big Mama Thornton. <laughs> I might be wrong there. Okay. But do you know what I mean, though, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think the lady that Wayne's on about is a little bit too early. Okay, I just want to. Well, but yeah, I think it might be being on my phone or something like that. Sorry, Wayne. When there was when her and her lover, which is called Richard Morgan, they was driving along Route sixty one. Uh, in Not Mrs. Six, though, is it? No, no, oh, Dick Morgan. No, it's it's the old uh, it, it's the poor rule. Yeah. <laughs> sixty-one. Eh? Ooh, the, ooh, the, the, seen it, sixty-one. They were going down Route sixty-one in Mississippi, and there was going to a place called Chattanooga. Which, Chattanooga Choo Choo. Didn't which, they do a song about that? Chattanooga Choo Choo. Yeah, Chattanooga. which yeah, which was a birthplace. Unfortunately, they hit a slow-moving truck near Cahoma, which is between Clarksdale and Memphis. Did they suffer a Cahoma? She did, actually, oh. and she had to have her arm amputated. Oh, oh. And, <laughs> and then later, a <laughs> couple, couple hours later, A slow-moving vehicle? Died. Oh. He got out on it. Right. No scratches, no bruises, no no nothing apparently. Suspicious. But the reckon when she died, she was about forty three years old because there's no record of her exact no, birthday. There were a lot of <laughs> there were lot, yeah, in them days, weren't there? Yeah, like me Hopkins, what's the same. He yeah. didn't have a birth certificate. No, they had to roughly estimate how old he was and where he was born and, you know, all that type of stuff. I think they got stuff. it wrong, though. He was never 117. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> well, the thing she was born, April 15th, 1894. That's when the think right. round about them times. So, poor lass dies uh, in, on uh, September 26, 1937. And they think she's roughly 43 year old. Well, they had the funeral on 4th of October in 1937, where thousands of people went and paid their respects. But she was buried with no headstone because her family couldn't afford a headstone. So right. she had to be buried unmarked. And that grave remained unmarked until a tombstone was erected on the 7th of August, 1970, when an up-and-coming... Uh, seven, seven, seven. When an up... Ah, ah. wait for ah. it. When an up-and-coming young lady, out of respect due to her, Bessie Smith being her idol, actually paid for an headstone to be put onto her grave. And that up and coming lady was Janice Joplin. Yeah. Oh, when you said that, I remembered the story. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah. that's I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, it's good, that, isn't it? Yeah, that's yeah. nice. And then, apparently, after, shortly after Janice had died, uh, a lady called Dory Previn wrote a song called Stone for Betsy, which is actually about the story of um, Janice Joplin and the headstone. Wow. And when I read that, I thought, oh, wow, that's, that's pretty good, that. I've never... Yeah. There's a similar story. Oh, that's somebody. really good. It, it's, it might have been mine and Hopkins, actually. It was somebody like that. No. What do they call that? Um, oh, uh, this, this, sorry, this is just not... I'm, I don't know. There's a similar story to this. Mm -hmm. But it involves another guitarist, a male one. It was either Lightning Hopkins or Hooker. It might have been Hooker. John Lee Hooker. John, John yeah. Lee. And the similar sort of situation where there weren't much of a headstone, it was just like a plaque or something like that. And a headstone and a proper burial stone were put in place by, and I forgot her name now. Oh, crap. Thank you. It's a good story. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> they call that Ginger Ray uh, slide guitar player Bonnie Ray. Bonnie Ray, she did the same thing. She did the same thing. I, I might be wrong about who she did it for, but I think it were either for Lightning Hopkins 
or hooker. Okay. Not completely sure which one it was. Well, I know uh, Lightning, when Knight and Hopkins died, they had no recollection of a birth certificate. There were no no information of him ever being born or where he was born or what year he was born. There was nothing at all. They couldn't find out. They, and they, they just got they born to in West. villages yeah. or out in Mississippi Delta there and often well, were registered yeah. well, different he was, times. Yeah. Sorry? Different times. Different times, yeah. Yeah. Well, Lightning Hopkins was originally from uh, Texas. Was he really? Yeah. He's, oh. Yeah, he's, he, was, he was born in Texas. Oh. They said that uh, because when it, when, he, when he first originally was as a young lad, he used to uh, tour with his mate who were a piano player because they were a duo, right? And he were, his piano mate were called Thunder, and that's how he got his name, Thunder and Lightning. And oh, that, and I see that what duo, right? And they went um, a, like like a scout came down from New York because he's he, he moved up to Memphis. And did all like South with his mate Thunder, and he, he got really good recollections of what were going off. And this young lad that's just tearing places up. So she went down to see him uh, from a record company in New York, took him back to New York for an audition, and she said to him, We want to take you because you're exactly what you're looking for, but we can't take your mate. Because we can't keep umping that piano about. Because we don't think he's, uh, we've got better players on his books oh, than right. him. But you are exactly what you're looking he, for. He dumped his mate. Well, no. He said, well, then you either take him or I don't do it. And then his mate learnt about this and said, no. You've got to go. You have got to go because I'm ending our duo and packing up. And he packed, he stopped playing piano so he could go onward and become oh, wow. like Lightning Hopkins. Good lad. Yeah. Um, I find these, these like, uh, startup stories, especially of yeah, this sort of era. Some, like, yeah, from that way back and all, there's some great stories about him, isn't there? Because what you got to remember, like, a lot of these people were, like, incredibly poor and there were no... Like this, this making a career of music had not been done before. Unless you're in a band, like yeah. I mean, like a a, a a brass band or some sort yeah. of like orchestral band. Yeah, people weren't consuming music no. in that. And plus, you weren't playing to twenty and thirty thousand people in no. arenas. And then, <laughs> no, they're going to a jump joint. And it's thirty. People. Yeah, there were thirty people in a pub that were, that were playing probably like, ten cents. Out of, out of pure reasons of. of Wanting to be in the best band they yeah. could, be in, mm. in a tight little trio uh, and make great music and get a sold out gig, which probably housed about 30 people. Yeah. And they did it for the pure love of it. And yeah. anything after that was just a, a happy coincidence. Yeah. Uh, and uh, they got uh, robbed left, right, and centre yeah. by oh, management. Oh, them. yeah. Because there was no experience, yeah. there was no, no knowledge. Yeah. Well, tickets for this gig might have been like 10 cents, which is about eight pence. Yeah. So well, 7p. I, I had a similar story in. in uh, uh, recently and they were saying that Clarksdale was supposed to be the birthplace of the blues or the home of the blues and to a lot of respects it is because Muddy Waters was born there his, his, his cabin's still there and uh, there's a lot of things about Clarksdale that says this is the home of the blues but what they were saying in this programme was that yeah it was but the people from Clarksdale used to go to Rose is it Rosedale? Which Rosedale is, which is just down the tracks and that's where all the action was. Yeah. That's where all these people in Clarksdale used to go. They didn't play in Clarksdale, they went down to in Rosedale. In that way, one Rosedale where uh, Johnson were born? I don't know. Eric Johnson? I don't know. Wasn't he from Rosedale? Going down to Rosedale, that song, it's, it appears in a few songs, that name. It, it's like... I seem to think but they used to Eric Johnson train were born there. With just a guitar or whatever they used to play, and they used to jump train, freight train, they used to go down to Rosedale, they jump off... <laughs> And then they go to these cabins that they used to have these juke joints in, play for a few dollars, have a good night out, jump a train, go up, back to Clarkston. Yeah, and then up to Bill Street. It's, yeah. it's, it's like there was a film about James Brown called Getting Up. The, sorry, it, I'm putting up, but what they said was, if you want the memorabilia of the clothes, they'll sell you a cup mm. in, in Clarkston and they'll sell you a, a commemorative plaque and they'll sell you this, but the home of the blues is Rosedale. Hmm. I'd like to go there. Go on, sorry. So there's a film called Getting Up by, uh, it was produced by Mick Jagger. It was a big James Brown fan. And it's a good film, but it doesn't quite hit the spot uh, like other biopics do. And I don't, 
I'd like to see biopics move into a dramatized series era. Like I'd like to see more in depth because James Brown started dancing outside a strip joint as a child for a spare cash. Like complete grassroots, didn't know anything about music. And then he takes you through his excess years and his drug and alcohol problem and all that sort of stuff. Oh, right, right yeah. But what yeah. I want to know is, because what it doesn't really like highlight is the way of which suddenly their life has changed. And they aren't educated enough to deal with the culture shock. They, they don't, yeah. you don't get to see it from their perspective. You're looking at it from the outside, like looking, yeah. oh, well, this is bad. And you're looking at it from like 20, when was it released? 2016. You're looking at it from now. At somebody back in the fifties or sixties or whatever, when, uh, when he was growing up, the you, it's not showing you about how they are responding to what's happening around them. Well, they didn't deal mm. with it very well, did they? No, but, well, they didn't deal with it a lot, and it's not their fault. No, it's no. just the time. But mm -hmm. I'd like to see a more fleshed out version rather than an hour and a half of like I don't I don't think it's fair to try and put someone like James Brown with such a lengthy career, or or even Amy Winehouse, which we spoke about before, yeah, into a half an hour program. I think it needs. I, don't to, think I, you can. I think it'd be good to see something like. Like a, a, um, HBO a series, yeah, just something that fleshes them out a bit more yeah. to see like the, the psyche of well, why. So there's that story about James Brown where he'd fake being asleep on a plane just so he could hear what his band main, members were saying about him. Why would he do that? It's his insecurity. Yeah. Why is he insecure? Yeah. Because yeah. there's suddenly like there's new music coming across and he doesn't know enough about music. He's not very smart. He didn't know anything about music. He just no. knew how to dance and sing. Yeah. And Rather than doing bio. He knew, he knew that if he didn't come in on time and, the, and the, the horn section didn't come in on time, it didn't sound right. He knew that. He was good at doing that because he made them, he would find them if they didn't do it. So he knew how to construct his songs to what Ari wanted them to be. That's an art in itself, really. It's like a director, really, wasn't it? A musical director, yeah. yeah. Rather than doing a biopic that lasts us, what, an hour and a half each, mm -hmm. an hour and 40 minutes, don't you think they'd be better off doing like an 8, 10, 12 episode box set? Oh, that's what we're saying. Yeah, I'd, yeah. I'd like to see that. I'd like, yeah. I'd like to see a fully fleshed out representation of an artist or, of like why maybe they reacted in such like key points in their life. Because so I'm sure if... What they do, they, they yeah. cherry pick them key points and it's either for like there's a shooting there or there's a an arrest there or there's a concert it's all cherry picked into it yeah to get it the work it all the story around to get to those focal points you don't yeah you want to see them but you want to see the day-to-day -day struggle that but they, if they did like a, a 10 12 episode box set they wouldn't need to cherry pick would they no they wouldn't you're right because you could make each one what are they, what's the episode usually an hour an hour 10 minutes is so if you've got 10 12 episodes i reckon you make a good james brown i'd like to I, see I, I like would. i'm right color the yeah. mundane bit of the mundane bit of james brown and i'm talking about james brown because i'm still talking about the film but i'd like to see if he could cook yeah, what like, did you want to stay on? What's his shopping list? Like, I want to see the mundane stuff of what yeah. made James Brown, James Brown outside of the stage. Yeah. What did he do Because a lot of that out? impacts the person on stage. Yeah, it's like... I would imagine it's more like fried chicken. I always found that fascinating that uh, Keith Richards likes to make shepherd's pie. Yeah, that's the sort of stuff that makes the character behind yeah. the scenes. That's his favourite dish, shepherd's pie, and apparently he's very good at making it. Yeah. Okay, great, show me that. Yeah. What did James Brown like to cook? Would he burgers? What did Elvis like? Did he do any cooking? Well, Elvis no, liked a banana and peanut butter sandwich, was not it? Ah, well, I've got a fact about Elvis. Ooh. Well, can I just tell you my thing about Elvis? Go on, then. Because it struck me the other day, I saw a clip on TV, and I thought, I was very confused. I know why I was confused about Elvis when I was young. Right. Sexy because, man. <laughs> no, because the man had jet black hair. Ooh. An eyeliner. Well, it might have been. He had jet black hair, and he had a, the best tannic world, and a white and, and a white like tash from Mumbai. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't look like someone from Mumbai. Yeah. So I think, how am I supposed to take him seriously? And then I find out he's blonde. Is he? Yeah. He's got mousy brown hair. Oh. But oh no, he's got jet black hair, slick bike, and a, and a Mumbai tan. I don't talk to God. Don't set me off for that. <laughs> 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 
brilliant. I love that. Yeah, there's a video time. online where someone's overdubbed yeah. Elvis in one of his films. No, you've just Elvis. taken the music away. And they've taken the music away, but they've overdubbed, overdubbed it where it's like, <laughs> yeah. it's hilarious. It's, it's really good. So, so, while we're on about Elvis, I was going to save this one, but I'm going to, being as you, you fetched him up. So, after a concert in 1976, Elvis and his bodyguards went to the Colorado Mine Restaurant for his favourite sandwich, which is called the Fool's Gold Loaf. Okay. Right? And what it is, it's sourdough bread loaf. Right. A whole loaf. A whole loaf with one pound of bacon on it, spread out. And he died of a heart attack. (laughs) And he he died of a cheeseburger. (laughs) A full jaw of peanut butter. Oh, my word. And a full jaw of grape flavoured jelly. And in that one sandwich is 8,000 calories. I don't understand why I'm getting fat. <laughs> <laughs> 8,000 calories. So, what, one after they've been and done this and he's had his sandwich. So, one night, late one night, he gets the munchies. All right. So, he, <laughs> but he's wanting. This sandwich. That's not a munchie, that, that's a no. week's worth of food. <laughs> so he's, he's, he's wanting this, this he's sandwich. Got a he's got a craving for his favourite sandwich. What can I do? How can I get it? I know. I'll get on my private jet and I'll fly over to Denver from Memphis <laughs> and I'll ring owners at restaurant up and I'll get them to meet me at Angus with a sandwich. Uh, or I'll just ring my management <laughs> and they'll do it all for me. <laughs> So off he jumps, phones his pilot up, he comes over, off the go. With the wind. Off, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he had that coming by. The Jetsons, so, was it? <laughs> <laughs> he goes a, away and goes to Denver, gets a month blower. Yeah, uh, blah, 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 blah. Now, some say, well, there were four bodyguards that went with him. And each of them says... Why? He's only having a sandwich. Two for him, two for the sandwich. It's, oh, right. it's, it's Elvis. Yeah. Are they all right. on the one? Well, probably. Ooh. So oh, no, this lot were a karate experience. Oh. He didn't need yeah. four. He didn't need four. And all that. Bodyguards for him. <laughs> so, they gets to Anger. Now, there were four bodyguards, and the the the, the person that were, do, that were writing this thing about these sandwiches, he says, they all got roughly this within a sandwich or two. Now, some say... When they turned up, they had 22 sandwiches. No. Give and up. some say he had, they came with around about 30 sandwiches. So what he did is, while he was in the hangar, he had two of these sandwiches and washed it down with a bottle of champagne. The remaining sandwiches, he took home for later days and put them in the fridge for a, a, a later time. So... When he ran out of these sandwiches and he were in Graceland, he used to make his own version of his favourite sandwiches, which were just two slices of bread, a thick spreading of creamy peanut butter, a mashed banana, and then six strips of bacon and fried it on a skillet. Well, a skillet's like a hot plate. Yeah. Americans call them skillets. But it, it become that popular that they now serve the Elvis in restaurants across the South. Wow. And you can go into a restaurant and ask for the Elvis. And what you will get is two bananas cut into thinly sliced pieces, four slices of bread fried. Fried bread. Nice. Four tablespoons of peanut butter, two tablespoons of unsalted butter, and four strips of bacon. And the way that they serve it is a fried bread, butter, peanut butter, bacon, fried bread, butter, Ramsey, peanut. Ramsey, are you listening to this? Peanut butter, bacon. And so, so it's wow. a stack. Yeah. I bet the customers are left all shook up, aren't they? Bring well, <laughs> apparently, they, 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 apparently he had Bring a... Yeah, apparently he had a hocka hocka burning love for this sandwich. <laughs> Uh, hot, hot, hot. <laughs> burn it up, burn it up. <laughs> but yeah, you can go. They, they actually sell now in restaurants, wow. and it's called the Elvis. Um, 
No, I don't think I would. It's all, uh, now. Well, it sounds a bit my favourite yeah. flavour is peanut butter. Yeah. Oh, but we've he had, had peanut butter whiskey bourbon before. He had great, found it great flavour. Yeah. You found it? Was it you was? know the one we got? Yeah. Oh, I found it where they sell it. Oh. Oh, hello. Hello. Great flavoured jelly. Yeah, it's just with great, peanut butter, bacon, and mashed that. bananas. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm not having that. I'm, I'm thinking <laughs> peanut butter. I, I, I want mine. I don't know what it works with. I don't know. All yin and yangs work, you know, like of course salty, they do. Yeah, salty bacon and peanut butter. Yeah, that sounds like it could be. A, yeah, it sounds a like a wonderful work. combo. But apparently, it's, it's got, got to. It. Apparently, it's got to be unsalted butter. Yeah. Why unsalted it's got butter? To be unsalted. Well, you've got your bacon, Luke. It's got your natural I've, salt in. That's what I'm saying. You've got your salt in your bacon. Yeah. I don't think Elvis was a connoisseur of of, of flavors. I, I, like, no. To, for him to be so specific, like I want salted. to know how big the sandwich is because you say well, it's, it's, it's it's sourdough sa- bread, sourdough it's loaf. Big. It's, it's got to be about how big is? Is it like the size of a large bread cake? Is it the no. size of a small loaf? It's going to be a for those of you it's, it's going to be a loaf, isn't it? You'd be very confused by the term bread cake. Bread cake is essentially it's a bread cake. We all know what bread cake is. Like, it's like a very large. In America, you might call it. A, it's a it's a bread biscuit size. Yeah. If you are ten miles down the road, you could call it a cob, a roll, um, a, a, a barn, tea cake, a barn. In Barnsley, they call it a tea a cake. Tea a cake. tea cake, and that's incorrect. And it's yes. incorrect because there's no currants in it. That's a fruited tea cake. I know. <laughs> it's wrong, isn't it? Yeah, but we yeah. digress. Yeah, we we are so wrong. Yes. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. I suppose it's a bigger loaf. Do you want it to be? You can make it as big as you want, can't you? When you've got like a pound of bacon no, on it I'm and all my, is, you know, it's no wonder that the bloke was. And they say not he died well, because well, they say he died on toilet with a cheeseburger. I don't yeah. think it was cheeseburger that killed him. It was what it was getting rid of that killed him. <laughs> you know, what I like, if, if, this, <laughs> if this loaf is like you know ten inches long and it's stuffed with all this stuff, and it's eight thousand calories. And he's just having a snack of two of them and save it rest for later. That yeah. that's you know that's putting a bit of strain on things, isn't it? Well, it obviously did. Yeah. yeah. Too much strain. Might end it. I mean, we all like us food. That's that's abu- abusing yeah. the privilege. But isn't it? eight thousand calories per sandwich. Yeah. Oof. I don't eat that in a day. Eight thousand yeah, calories. No <laughs> I get worried when he was packing his chocolate peanuts. <laughs> No, I'm having too many chocolate peanuts here. <laughs> eight, eight bloody thousand calories a sandwich. What, what, That's crazy. I'm trying to think of like an equivalent that you made. So if he sat in that hangar and had two, he had 16,000 calories in probably space of what? There's no wonder he died. 20 minutes? Well, and that will combine with drugs. The munches were drugs, yeah. by the way. Yeah. Yeah. I got the munches. Because oh. didn't, didn't, he, didn't, he, didn't he have something like 98 different tablets, oh, prescription got, tablets yeah. every day? Oh, yeah. God. Wow. Or something like that. Yeah. It, it's, and bottles of champagne. It's a sad story, really. <laughs> it is, isn't it? It, it is, really. So, yeah. 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 To, get it, to get to that affair yeah. that, 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 that you have to have 98 prescription tablets a day he was a victim of, of a gilded cage wasn't he he was trapped in his yeah. own his own making yeah. um he was and he was physically trapped by other people yeah he just wanted to be a teddy bear oh <laughs> <laughs> well on that note <laughs> goodbye <laughs> oh.